Hello, Gary Simon of Corsetro.com. And just yesterday, we passed the 100,000 subscriber marks on my YouTube channel. So that's kind of exciting. Uh, and also, I'm releasing a brand new series, 100% free series, all on Angular 2. And so in this initial video here, we're gonna discuss, and I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step how to get it up and running on your system in the manual format. So there's several different ways to get Angular 2 ready to go. And I'm gonna be covering all those, but just in this video alone, it's gonna be the manual way because it's very important to learn how things kind of work at their fundamental level. Uh, and you'll see in the next video, some quicker methods of getting it installed. So what we wanna do, I'm gonna switch over here to my desktop and I'm at the angular.io official website, and this is a framework developed and maintained by Google. And as you can see, it's one framework for mobile and desktop apps. Now, if you wanna learn more about it specifically, you can visit this page. And the area that we're really gonna focus on here is get started. So this is the quick start. And notice it says TypeScript down here, which is a superset of JavaScript. Now. If you wish, if you come down over here to this left column, at the very bottom, it will say Angular for TypeScript. Now, by default, it's on TypeScript, but if you want to learn how to use Angular with just regular JavaScript, you can click here and this page will change to reflect that. But we're gonna stick with TypeScript. Okay, so the first things first. As you can see, the quick start, I'm just going to run you through this, but Again, you may get caught up if you're brand new to this sort of thing, so that's why I really wanna run through it here. And just to also give a little bit more ex explanation on some of the aspects that it may not really delve into. So first, as you notice, the prerequisite is to install Node.js and NPM. So first, you may be wondering, what is Node.js? Well, simply put, it's a very fast server-side platform. And NPM, of course, stands for Node Package Manager. So these two things are related to each other in that NPM is used to install Node packages. Now, you could do this via command line, and there's a variety of Node programs that you can use in the course of developing your apps and websites. All right, so what we wanna do down here uh, if you don't already have it, just simply install them. So we open up this link here and it's gonna show you how to install NPM. And by default, when you install Node.js, NPM is already included. So you'll want to download this here and get it installed. All right, so assuming you do that and all goes smooth, and it may not, sometimes you may run into certain errors on your machine via the command line. And by the way, when I say command line, if you're on Windows, it's just the Windows command line that you can use. Of course, it's the terminal on Mac OS. Uh, also, you can use something called the git bash, which is, real quickly, I'll show you that as well. You can download this right here. Let me go back here for any of the operating systems. And once you install Node.js, come over here real quickly, it will let you know that you can do this command right here. For Mac, it'd be sudo npm install npm-g. And for Windows, just you can knock off that sudo and you should be good to go. All right. So once we have that installed, what we wanna do is create and configure the project. So we wanna create the project folder. Now you could do that in the Windows uh, file browser or you could do it through the command line. So real quickly, I'm going to go ahead and bring up my command line. I'm gonna drag it over here real quick from my other monitor. All right, I'm gonna go into CD code CD examples, and this is just going to be my folder. And you could put this anywhere you want into a projects folder or whatever. And as you can see, just to get it started, make dir for make directory, angular quick start, and then you cd into it. All right, so I'm gonna type in make dir angular dash quick start, and then cd angular dash quick start. All right, so now what we wanna do Scroll down here and we'll see that we have four different files, three of which are JSON files. 
All right, so JSON, real quickly, if you're unfamiliar with what that is, is short for JavaScript Object Notation. So what is that? Well, basically, in short, it's a way to store information in an easy, easily accessible manner. And this is done through a bunch of property and value pairs. So this is actually what it looks like. So we can see we have our property here and our value here. And if you're new to this, of course, you're gonna be completely confused, but all we have to really understand at this point is to understand right here under dependencies, when we run an NPM install command, which is gonna be coming up shortly, it's going to grab all of these node packages and install them, all right? So what we want to do is we're going to hit copy code and we can see the name of this is called package.json. And what we want to do is get out our code editor and I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code. And this is something that's developed and maintained by Microsoft. And the great thing about it is it's free, of course, and open source. All right. So I, if you want to use that, you can use that. If you have something else that you use, that's perfectly fine as well. So after that, we're going to go ahead and open that up. And I'm already ready to open up in my Angular Quick Start. Select the folder. And here we go. All right, so we're in an empty project. We're going to create a new file. And we're going to call it package.json. And then simply paste in everything that we need here. We'll go ahead and save that. And then over here, let's go ahead, get back to our quick start. tsconfig.json, we'll copy the code and then create the new file. Real quickly, I wanna make sure I'm naming this right. tsconfig, paste that in and save it. typings.json, copy it. And then finally, systemjs.config.js. We'll copy that. Oops. Systemjs.config.js. All right. And save that. So now we have our four files. So let's expand this once again. We'll get rid of these. We're going to come down here. And now we want to install the packages with this command here. So we'll get up our command prompt. And I'm going to type in npm install. Okay, so it's gonna sit here for a while and you'll see it'll start scrolling some information here based on what it's doing, but really it's just taking a look primarily at that package.json file and it's going to install all of those packages into a folder and we could possibly see this if we open up our editor and the folder would be created in here uh, and one of the main ones will be node modules. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and pause or fast forward this just so that we don't have to wait here for a while because it's going to take just a little bit of time. All right. Okay. So you can see it created that folder along with a typings folder. And it's important to note that um, whether or not you have that and you should, but you can see it installed a lot of different dependencies here. And of course it installed much more than what's just shown here in our package.json, if I can get that real quick, right here. And that's because a lot of these have other dependencies that aren't listed that are also installed. Okay, so let's go ahead and minimize that. And coming back here, also, it will note down here if the typings folder doesn't show up after running npm install, of course, then you can run this here. All right, so step two is just to create the application, which means we have to create an app folder. All right, so let's go back to our editor and right here off of our root, we're going to create the new folder called app. All right, let me minimize this or shrink that down just a bit. Inside this app folder, we want to create an app.module.ts. TS is short for TypeScript. So let's copy this and in our app folder, we'll create that new file and paste this in. Now, if this looks unfamiliar to you, don't worry, we're going to cover 
more in depth what these things mean and what these different lines of code have to say. All right, so coming down here, we're gonna go ahead and it says create a component and add it to your application. All right, so let's go ahead and create an app.component.ts in the same folder here. Go ahead and copy that code as shown. We'll save that. Notice under template, it says my first Angular app. We'll come back to that in a second. And now under app.module.ts, which we already created, we have to import that app component. So I'm just gonna copy this, or I, rather you could just copy the whole thing and come back to it. And you'll see if I select all and then control V, it only added just this import statement and it also added under declarations and bootstrap the app component as well. Now we wanna start up the application. So first, before we do that, we need to create the file under app called main.ts. So one more file, oops, main.ts rather. And we wanna copy this and save it. And then we need to create an index.html in the root of the project. And we'll copy this real quickly. And this is just standard HTML here. Although the one thing that differs here is this custom tag called my-app. And if we save this and we go to appcomponent.ts, we'll see a selector called my app. But of course, I will get into this more in depth beyond just this installation video here. And then we can create real quickly a styles.css in the root project folder. We'll copy that code real quick and paste it in and save it. And then build and run the application. So let's go back to our terminal or command prompt and type in npm start. Now with any luck, we'll get the window that loads up here from localhost 3000. And there we go. That is, in short, the very kind of lengthy process in terms of manually getting, and I wouldn't really say it's that quick, although it's a little bit quick once you get the hang of it, uh, process of getting Angular 2 up and running. And just a really quick note, of course, if you make any changes, if we go back to app.component.ts and we change this to, hey, what's up? we'll see that it automatically refreshes and reloads the browser for us. Also, you'll know that you'll notice you know, several other files were created and that's because it takes this TypeScript code here and it converts it into raw JavaScript, which is what is essentially used. And then we also have a .map file here. All right, so that is the manual way and then again, not too quick way of getting Angular 2 ready to go and installed. Uh, in the next video, I'm gonna cover a couple more quick ways to get up and running with Angular 2. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe on my YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash user slash design course. And I mentioned that just because if you're watching this on coursetra.com, you may not know that address. Otherwise, some of you probably be, will be watching from YouTube. All right, so I'll see you very shortly with that next video.